What I'm going to focus on is three areas of um, sort of strategic thinking and, and practical applications relating to, uh, in effect, offer development or creating an incentive that will motivate your customers and prospects to take whatever action you want them to take online. So let's dive in. Um, I want to begin with just a, a quick um, analysis, in effect, of, of what is an incentive and, and why we need one in our advertising or our, our marketing communications. To begin with a definition, uh, an incentive or an offer has two pieces. It's what the prospect is going to do for us and what we are going to do for the prospect. So there's sort of two sides to think about. Let me just move on um, and talk a little bit about categorization of offers. And there are actually lots of ways to categorize offers, but one of the most useful ones is to look at offers on either a hard or a soft continuum. A hard offer is essentially one that asks your prospect to do a lot of work. And a soft offer asks them to basically do not much of anything. Um, hard offers tend to be useful later in the sales cycle, and soft offers tend to be useful earlier when we're just trying to establish, uh, kick off the relationship, and, we're, and we need the name so that we can continue, uh, continue to market to them. Examples of a soft offer would be anything for free. Examples of a hard offer would be something that requires them to, to take a, a more onerous action like maybe make a purchase or submit a, an RFI or, or um, you know, ask for a sample or take, a, take a, uh, an audit or, or a sales call or something. So um, I, I, I divide offers into these two types because each of them has a role to play in, in the world of online marketing. And it's up to you as a marketer to determine where on this hard, soft continuum you need to be at any given stage of the, of the sales process or the buying process. And of course, the reason is that the hardness or softness is going to drive response rates. What we're looking at here, in effect, is the trade-off between quality and quantity. And the essential fact of what's going on here between hard and soft is that with a soft offer, you get a higher response rate, but you get, um, it, but quality declines. That's really all that's going on. There's an inverse relationship between quality and quantity. So we have to decide as marketers, do we want more of lower quality, or do we want fewer of higher quality? And I can't make that decision for you. This is a strategic decision that, um, that, that, that you need to make as marketers. But what you can do is begin to mitigate, to try to eke out a little bit more quality without sa sacrificing quantity, for example. And let me show you a couple of examples of how this can work. I like to call it equation management. I'm trying to get more for less. I'm trying to get a nice high response without sacrificing quality. And one way to do this is what the banks do. Can, can you explain to me what's going on in this ad that's about equation management? Here's the offer, $50 back when, how is this worded? After your first purchase. Don't you love that? Now this is a consumer example, I don't know if we can use this in B2B, but what we're saying here is we're getting the power of the free $50, that's the soft part, combined with the, oh, but you have to buy something first, that's the hard part. So we're managing the equation to get some quality without sacrificing quantity. I'd now just like to tell you a couple things not to do. The first one is, don't use asterisks. An asterisk here, what have we got here? We've got an asterisk here, you see that? And um, this is the fine print that the asterisk refers to. An asterisk communicates graphically, we're out to hoodwink you. You can't trust us. 
So do what you can to eliminate an asterisk from your, uh, your, your graphic presentation of your offer, please. It, you know, and you'll see response rates rise. Another uh, uh, thing to avoid is, is over, being overly complex. You know that expression, if you confuse them, you lose them. This is a, a, a perfect example in the world of um, business to business offer development. Neither should your offer be too vague or too generic. The more specific and clear it is, the better, and it must not be too good to be true. If your offer is too generous, people will get suspicious, and that will also reduce response. So these are the you know, offer mistakes that I often see in B2B marketing. And so I hope that uh, the, the ideas that you've heard today about how to develop an incentive, how to craft an offer that will be effective, and how to present it with the, most, uh, the, the, the best possible power has been helpful. It's been a lot of fun for me to have a chance at you guys this afternoon. And uh, now it's time for cocktails. <laughs> Thank you.